Geronimo Stilton, Field Trip to Niagara Falls, read by Camille Shropshire, with permission from Scholastic. Geronimo Stilton, Field Trip to Niagara Falls. Oh, how I hate being late. Rain, rain, go away. It was the middle of the night. I was in my comfy, cozy bed trying to sleep. But the rain was beating on my window like a crazed woodpecker. I fell asleep dreaming about birds and pounding ocean waves and huge crashing waterfalls. It rained the whole night. The next morning, I woke up exhausted. I stared at the clock on my bedside table. Holy cheese! I was late. Oh, how I hate being late. I hurled myself into the bathroom. I turned on the shower while brushing my teeth. I combed my whiskers while pulling on my pants. I chugged down my coffee while racing out the door. Rats! I ran at breakneck speed to my aunt Sweet Fur's house. This is where my little nephew Benjamin lives. I had promised to take him to school today. Benjamin giggled when he saw me. I had forgotten to button my pants and my fur was sticking up all over the place. On my way to school, we passed my office. I ran the most famous daily newspaper on Mouse Island. It is called the Rodents Gazette. Benjamin tugged on my paw. Uncle, may I take my friends to visit you at the Gazette sometime? He asked. I smiled. My nephew was such a sweet and smart little mouse. Maybe someday he would follow in my paw steps and run a newspaper too. Of course, dear nephew, I said. Finally, we arrived at Benjamin's school. What a zoo! Little rodents were running everywhere. Some held on to their parents' paws. Others tumbled off the school bus. Some zipped up on bicycles. It was so loud I could barely hear myself squeak. Just then, the school bell rang. Ring! I nearly jumped out of my fur, and that was when I spotted a blonde rodent. No, she wasn't just any blonde rodent. She, was, she had gorgeous fur. She had a sweet smile, and she had blue eyes, the color of a clear summer sky. Good morning. I am Miss Angel Paws, Benjamin's teacher, she said. I took a step toward her, but before I could shake her paw, I tripped over my tail. I landed snout first in the dirt. Benjamin's friends, Liza, Punk Rat, Kenny, David, Esmeralda, Lucy, Beth, Scampers, Kay, Mohammed, Susan, Stephen, Antonia, Tim, Carmen, Shannon, Sam, Malcolm, Sakura, Benjamin, Oliver. Don't worry about a thing. I turned to run away with my tail between my legs. I was so embarrassed. Why did I have to make a fool of myself in front of such a pretty mouse? Today, we'll decide where to go on our field trip, I heard Miss Angel pause announce. Hmm, field trip. Suddenly, I had an idea. Maybe the class could come visit me at the Rodents Gazette. Then the teacher would see I wasn't just a clumsy, dim-witted mouse. I strode back into the classroom. Oh, good, Mr. Stilton, you haven't left. I want to ask for your advice, Miss Angel Paws squeaked. Do you think this is a good place to go on a field trip? She had been writing something on the blackboard. I would love to tell you what it said, but I couldn't read it. No, it wasn't written in ancient squeakies. I just couldn't see a thing. That's because the class bully, Punk Rat, had tripped me on my way in. I had lost my eyeglasses. The teacher tapped on the board. What do you think, Mr. Stilton? She repeated. 
I squinted desperately at the board. I felt like one of the three blind mice. Everything looked foggy. Then I thought of something. Maybe Miss Angel Paws wanted to visit the Rodents Gazette. Maybe that's what she had written on the board. Yes, that had to be it, I decided. That's why she wanted my advice. <clears throat> I think that's a great idea, I said to the teacher. I would love to take you there. Miss Angel Paws was amazed. Really, Mr. Stilton? She squeaked. Of course, I said. And don't call me Mr. Stilton, call me Geronimo. But who will pay for it? When can we go? Don't you have to work? Asked the teacher. Don't worry about a thing, I told her. I can take a little time off. You will be my guests. We can go today if you'd like. The teacher squealed with delight. She clapped her paws together. Guess what? Class, Mr. Stilton, I mean Geronimo, has volunteered to take all of us to Niagara Falls for a whole week, she announced. We'll leave today. The class cheered. Hooray! We're going to Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Stilton, they cried. I blinked. Niagara Falls? Punkrat pulled at one of my whiskers. Of course, can't you read? Look at the blackboard, he smirked, handing me my glasses. I put them on. I stared at the blackboard. It read, Class Trip to Niagara Falls. I gulped. Oh, oh how did I get myself into such a mess? The teacher was always ca already calling the travel agency. Yes, 22 students, a teacher, and Geronimo Stilton. We need 24 round-trip tickets to Niagara Falls, she squeaked into the phone. What could I do? The class was so excited, they could hardly sit still. With a sigh, I took out my credit card. It's a Top Mouse Diamond Plus Super Deluxe Extra Supreme Gold card. It was a good thing I had it. This trip was going to cost me more than my two-year subscription to the Cheese of the Month Club. After booking our trip, the teacher waved a yellow notebook in the air. Class, this notebook will be our travel journal, she announced. We will write in it every day. That way, we will never forget this wonderful trip. This is how to keep a travel journal. Today is, we plan to visit, the weather is, we saw, we really enjoyed, we ate, we learned, surprises. This photo was taken at. Are we there yet? Do you know how to get to Niagara Falls? Let me tell you. The falls are located at the border of the United States and Canada. They are very far from Mouse Island. The flight was the longest one of my life. Well, okay, maybe it wasn't the longest, but it was the worst. That's because scampered, scampers, spilled orange juice on my computer, Sakura smeared ice cream on my tie, David pulled one of my whiskers, Carmen knocked down my suitcase, Esmeralda squeaked my ear off. Tim asked me 317 times, are we there yet? The whole time I tried desperately to read my book on Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls, located at the border of the United States on the east and Canada on the west, the falls are formed by waters of the Niagara River. During the journey from Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, the river suddenly drops more than 180 feet to the level of the riverbed, forming falls unique in their power. There are actually two different falls at Niagara. On the Canadian side, there's Horseshoe Falls, approximately 2,300, 2,500 feet wide, while Rainbow Falls on the American side is approximately 1,000 feet in width. In the winter, the river freezes, but the falls do not, because they are in constant movement. 
Every year, more than 700,000 gallons of water fall. Niagara Falls is also a precious source of electrical energy. Approximately 50% of the water at night, 75%, is directed to the hydroelectric power plants that supply the United States and Canada with electricity. But the power of the water is creating a problem for the future of the falls. In the past 12,000 years, the water running over the rocks has eroded them and shifted the falls by almost seven miles. Map of Niagara Falls. A bit of history. For centuries, only the Native Americans who lived at what is now the border between the United States and Canada knew about the spectacular falls. The first official news of their existence dates back to the second half of the 16th century. The man who made the, them famous was Louis Enpin, a Belgian monk who was part of an expedition organized by the French explorer René Robert Cavalier, Sur de la Salle. The expedition arrived at the falls in December 1678, and its members were mesmerized by their size and grandeur. At the time, the falls had a drop in level of more than 590 feet and carried twice as much water as they do now. The first tourists. Tourism was slow to arrive. One of the first important visits occurred in 1791 when the Duke of Kent, father of the future Queen Victoria of England, stayed at the only building in the area, a small wooden hut. The first groups of tourists began arriving during the mid-1800s. The falls continued to attract important guests such as Jérôme Bonaparte, brother of the famous Napoleon. He came from New Orleans on his honeymoon. From that moment on, Niagara Falls became a popular destination for couples on their honeymoons. Everyone except me. Just before our plane landed, the captain made an announcement. Attention, rodents. We are now passing over the famous Niagara Falls. Take a look out your window if you would like to see a truly spectacular view of the falls, he advised. Everyone wanted to see the falls. Everyone leaned to the window. Everyone saw the spectacular view, except me. I was being suffocated by a throng of screaming, jumping mouselets. They had pressed themselves up against the window. I couldn't move. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't see a thing. Finally, the plane landed. We were in Toronto, Canada. From there, we climbed on a bus. We rode on the bus for about an hour and a half, and then we arrived at the falls. As we pulled up, the driver made an announcement. We have now reached the famous Niagara Falls. Look out your window if you would like to see a truly spectacular view of the falls, he said. Everyone wanted to see the falls. Everyone leaped to the window. Everyone saw the spectacular view, except me. A throng of screaming mouselets was crawling all over me. They plastered themselves up against my window. I couldn't move. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't see a thing. The bus stopped. I got off. The roaring sound of the falls was incredible. I tried to take a picture. Everyone wanted to take a picture of the falls. Everyone got his or her camera ready. Everyone snapped away at the falls, except me. Oh, if I could only get away from those screaming mouselets. They were all over me. I couldn't move, I couldn't breathe, couldn't see a thing. The bus took us to the city of Niagara Falls on the lake. It was already dark. I do not know how to set up a tent. 
What a day. I was tired. I was hungry. I stumbled off the bus. I couldn't wait to sink into a nice, soft bed. I couldn't wait to put on my fluffy cat fur slippers. I couldn't wait to order from room service. Is the hotel nearby? I yawned. I'm pooped. Miss Angel paused, looks shocked. Hotel? Why, Mr. Geronimo, we have come to enjoy the great outdoors. We're not going to a hotel. We're going to camp out, she squeaked. My eyes opened wide. I looked around. Miss Angel Paws wasn't joking. We were standing in the middle of the wilderness. Did I mention I'm not much of an outdoor mouse? Um, yes, well, who's going to set up the tents? I stammered. Miss Angel Paws rolled her eyes. You are, of course, Mr. Geronimo, she said. I made a quick calculation. There were 24 of us. Each tent would hold four mice. That meant I had to set up six tents for the little mice. Then we would need one tent for me and one for Miss Angel Paws. Plus, we needed one big tent for all of us to eat breakfast in. Holy cheese! I couldn't set up nine tents. Just then, the little mice began whining. Come on, we're tired. I couldn't make heads or tails of the tents. I set up one tent inside out. I zipped myself up in another and couldn't get out. Then I whacked my elbow, my paw, with a hammer. I give up, I screeched. Did I mention I'm not much of an outdoor mouse? I sat down on a rock, took off my glasses so I could sob freely. Help, I can't do this. Just then my little nephew Benjamin whispered in my ear, call Aunt Thea. She always knows what to do, he suggested. I dried my tears. Good idea, I agreed. I guess you could say my sister Thea is the opposite of me. She loves a challenge. A half hour later, after I talked to Thea on the phone, all the tents were ready. Hooray! yelled the little mice. Isn't it great sleeping in a tent, Mr. Geronimo? Miss Angel Paws said. <coughs> How to set up a tent. One, lay the tent and stakes and stake the corners. Two, assemble the frame by connecting the poles and hook the tent to the frame. Three, pull the lateral poles and stabilize the tent by staking the ropes. Four, mount the rain tarp and attach it well with the stakes. Five, dig a drainage ditch around the tent. You'll need it if it rains. Choose a flat area on one on a gentle slope that is well protected from the wind. I do not know how to cook at a campsite. I was so tired I could only nod. Then I heard a low grumble. Was it a bear? Was it a, was it a fox? Was it a ravenous rodent eating monster? No, it was just my tummy. I was starving. So, who will do the cooking, I asked. Why, you will, of course, Mr. Geronimo, Miss Angel Paws said. The little mice began screaming. Come on, we're starving. They whined. I sighed. I trudged to the brook to get some water. But on my way back, I tripped. The water flew out of the bucket. I decided to get the fire started, but the wood was too damp. It would not light. I went to get some more wood and accidentally stepped on the egg carton. Crunch! Then I noticed an army of ants. They were devouring all the bread. I give up, I squeaked. Did I mention I'm not much of an outdoor mouse? Try calling Aunt Thea again, Benjamin whispered. She'll know what to do. A half hour later, the fire was ready. Now, if I could just get the ants off the bread. How to cook outdoors. Before you light a fire, find out the wind's direction. 
Always be aware of the danger of fires. Keep a bucket of water nearby to put out the fire and always get help from an adult. Bend three wooden poles together, bind three wooden poles together, then hang a pot on the chain that has been secured at the top of the poles. Arrange several clean, flat rocks so they are heated by a fire underneath. You can cook eggs, fish, or meat on top of them. Arrange two forked sticks across from each other on either side of the fire. Hang the pots on a strong piece of wood and then place the, each end of the wood in the forks. Never leave a fire unattended. Come on, we have to go. After we ate, I fell asleep with my snout in my plate. I woke with a start. Psst, psst, Mr. Geronimo, a voice called. It was Miss Angel Paws. Mr. Geronimo, you mm, forgot to set up a bathroom, she whispered. I paled. A bathroom? Come on, we have to go, the little mice squeaked. This time I knew exactly what to do. I called my sister. I wasn't proud. I was desperate. After all, who knew how to set up a bathroom outdoors? Of course, my sister figured it out. Half an hour later, the bathroom was finished, and so was I. I crawled into my sleeping bag and slept like a ten-ton brick of stale cheese. Even a starving mouse couldn't have moved me. How to make a bathroom. Number one. Dig a hole. Leave a big pile of dirt next to the hole. After each use, throw some of the piled up dirt into the hole. Two, use some wooden poles and a tarp to build a screen around the toilet. Number three, build a tripod. Hang a bucket with water to use as a makeshift shower. Four, build another tripod. Place a bowl on top to wash your paws and your snout. Gentle Mouse showed us how to make a nest using a box and a towel. We found some seeds and fed them to the bird. It let out a happy chirp. Then it started smoking. Holy cheese! What was in those seeds? Then I realized the smoke wasn't coming from the bird. It was filling the air around us. Fire! Someone screamed. Gentle Mouse called for help on his cell phone. Hurry, the forest is on fire, he cried. Someone must have left a campfire burning. Send a plane right away. Gentle Mouse told everyone to stay calm. He divided us up into two teams. The first team dug fire trenches. If we cut down all of the plants, the fire will have nothing to burn, Gentle Mouse explained. The second team formed a long chain that ended at a nearby brook. The first mouse in the line filled a pail with water. Then he passed it down the line. The last mouse in line threw the water on the flames. We worked like pack rats, but the heat was becoming unbearable. My fur was scorched. The smoke was making me choke. Suddenly, a miracle happened. We heard the sound of engines. It was a plane carrying an enormous tank filled with water. The plane dumped the water onto the flames and then left to pick up more water from the lake. We were saved. But before we could celebrate, Gentle Mouse began shouting, Has anyone seen Miss Angel Paws? I saw her running toward the bushes. I think she was trying to help a wounded fawn, Kay cried. Don't worry, Miss Angel Paws, Gentle Mouse yelled. I'll save you. He disappeared in a cloud of smoke. A few minutes later, he returned. He was carrying the teacher in his paws. My hero, giggled Miss Angel Paws. He saved the fawn, too. I felt a twinge of jealousy. Why couldn't I be someone's hero? Still, I had to admit, Miss Angel Paws and Gentle Mouse were a match made in mouse heaven. 
Have I got a surprise for you? That night, the two love mice made an announcement. Can you guess what it was? Yes, they had decided to get married. Hooray, cried the class. Everyone was so excited. But they were even more excited when they heard that Miss Angel Paws and Gentle Mouse wanted to get married immediately. They had been missing each other for years. They didn't want to wait any longer. We can do it right here in Niagara Falls, Miss Angel Paws squeaked. We put our heads together to plan the ceremony. It would have to be pretty simple. There would be no wedding gown or fancy wedding cake. After all, where could we get a dress and a cake in the middle of the wilderness? I called my sister to ask her for advice. As I said, that mouse just loves a challenge. An hour later, my cell phone rang. It was Thea. Hey, Jerry Berry, have I got a surprise for you? She squeaked. I gulped. A surprise from my sister? The last time she surprised me, she carpeted my whole ap apartment in pink cat fur. Flap, flap, vroom. Right at that instant, I heard a strange noise over my head. I looked up and screamed. A pink helicopter was circling above me. Pink sugar-coated almonds rained down all around me. Pink invitations with the bride's and groom's names on them flew through the air. A bunch of thorny pink roses hit me in the snout. Youch! So this was my sister's surprise. I was relieved. I'd take a thorn in the snout over that awful pink carpeting any day. I told everyone who the nutty mouse flying the plane was. My sister loves pink, I added. At that moment, an enormous pink package struck me on the head. Before I fainted, I noticed a note on the side of the box. It said, For Angel Paws and Gentle Mouse. When I came to, the others were busy opening Theo's package. No one gave me a second glance. I snorted. So much for mousely manners. It was clear then that all anybody cared about was the box. What was inside? It was a full-length wedding dress and a tux. Now everyone was happy. Well, everyone except me, that is. A lump had formed on top of my head. It was the size of a mega huge ball of mozzarella. Barbecue time. After the wedding ceremony, we headed back to the campsite. When we arrived, we were overwhelmed by a delicious smell. I sniffed the air. <laughs> Could it be? Yes. It smelled just like a backyard barbecue. I ran toward the campsite, and that's when I spotted a big poster leaning against a rock. It said, Barbecue! Come one, come all. Get ready for the best barbecue this side of Niagara Falls. Brought to you by the best chef in the world. I scratched my fur. There was only one rodent I knew who was that full of himself. My cousin Trap. Just then, a pair of whiskers emerged from behind a cloud of smoke. A pot-bellied rodent wearing a loud Hawaiian print shirt stood behind a smoking grill. He waved a greasy spatula at me. Yo, Germeister, what's squeaking? He smirked. Love the lump on your head, that's so you. I rolled my eyes. Yep, it was my cousin Trap, all right. Have I mentioned he's a total pain in my tail? I started to explain about the bump on my head when Trap interrupted me. Listen up, rodents, he called. You're about to taste the best cooking around. So don't drag your feet. It's time to eat. Now that you found Trap, you can throw away your map. That's Trap. T, as in look out tongue, you're in for a treat. R, as in ready or not, here it comes. A, as in, ask me if I can cook. P, as in, pay attention. The name is Trap. Yes, there is one thing you should know about my cousin. He's in love. No, not with another mouse, with himself. 
Still, I had to admit his barbecue was delicious. I stuffed my snout like my Uncle Cheese belly at a make-your-own cheese Sunday buffet. After dessert, Thea took me on a helicopter ride over the falls. It really was a spectacular sight. Too bad I got sick on the way down. I knew I shouldn't have eaten three pieces of cheesecake. Little Mice Around the World Finally, it was time to go home. We boarded the plane headed for Mouse Island. It was another long flight. The little mice climbed all over me. Then they sang songs at the top of their lungs. I didn't get one bit of rest. Still, I was kind of sad when we landed. I was going to miss those little rodents. As we were waiting for our luggage, I made an announcement. You are all invi invited to visit me at the Rodents Gazette, I told the class. You can see how we put a newspaper together. You can see how a book is made. Hooray, the little mice cheered. Then Punk Rat grabbed my paw. I'm going to miss you, Mr. Geronimouse, he sobbed. I patted his head. I'll miss you too, Punk Rat, I said. Um, but remember, my name is Geronimo, Geronimo Stilton. Of course, Mr. Geronimity, Punk Rat squeaked. I tried to remain calm. It's Geronimo, Punk Rat, I repeated. That's Geronimo. Punk Rat smirked. That's what I said, Mr. Geronimus, he giggled. I gave up. What else could I do? Punk Rat flung his paws around my neck. He really wasn't such a bad little mouse. In fact, he was just like lots of little mice around the world, full of life and love and, oh, of course, cheese. To travel is better than to arrive. We headed for the airport next. A school bus was waiting for Miss Angel Paws and her class. I waved goodbye. I'll take a taxi home, I told them. A line of cheese-colored cabs waited at the curb, but for some reason, my paws didn't want to budge. My bag felt like it weighed a ton. An overwhelming feeling of sadness came over me. It had been such an exciting adventure, and now it was over. Just then, I remembered a line from one of my favorite authors. His name was Robert Louis Squeakinson. Do you know him? He wrote a book called Treasure Island. Anyway, he said that it's, the travel is better than to arrive. Well, I don't know if that's true all of the time. Usually, I'm thrilled to get back to my comfy, cozy mouse hole. But this time, I still had the travel bug in me. And so... I did what any smart mouse would do. I turned around and headed right back into the airport. I, Geronimo Stilton, booked a trip to Blue Cheese Island. I hear it's supposed to be beautiful there this time of year. Blue skies, blue waters, and lots and lots of blue cheese. <laughs>